Hello, hobby gardeners, farmers, and DIY lovers. It's your boy, I am Will. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built my 500 capacity egg incubator. This is after I built my first incubator out of a cotton box. I decided to get a little braver and use wood to build this one because I wanted something a bit more lasting and solid. So I decided to use wood um, instead of a cotton. And um, before we start this video, let's get some technical details out of the way. So to build this um, incubator, here's a diagram of um, what I did before um, starting the incubator. Um, you can see the size of the uh, incubator is um, 400 by 400 by 1000 uh, millimeter. Um, you also have some components which I built into the incubator. You have the hygrometer for heat and humidity sensing. You have the switch for power on and off. You have the bulb um, which serves as your heat source. Um, I have the egg, um, egg trays, uh, you have a glass door to um, kind of peep through and not open the cabinet all the time. You have two fans for air circulation and then you have a plug which would connect to a power source. And um, also um, here's a list of the uh, components that are built in. So two um, bulb holders, you have the hygrometer, you have an alufoil for uh, insulation. You have the two bulbs, you have a two core cable, you have a plug, you have the fan, which is two, and then a switch. That's what you need for this construction. Now let's just DIY. So to start this construction, I repurposed these two boxes that I used in the past for one of my um, experiments, which was um, hydroponic farming, and this was the rafting method. So once the experiment was successful, um, I decided to repurpose these boxes and use them as the cabinet for my new egg incubator. So I dismantled um, two of them and um, joined them together to form the cabinet that I need. So you can see the cabinet is almost complete. There are a few parts missing, um, which is the door. And now I am going to um, start building the um, cabinet door. What I did here was I also repurposed a glass that I had lying around and um, I used this as part of the door. I think it's very important and then I would advise you to have a part of your door which is glass because it prevents you from opening your cabinet to see what's going on on the inside. So when you have a glass door, you can always peep through the glass door and see what's happening in your incubator and you don't have to open it much. What I did here was to prevent the glass from falling out, I put a frame around it. I would also caution you here against using a hammer on a glass. Um, I was very careful uh, to have not broken the glass, but if possible, use some screws. Um, to um, prevent any eventual accidents which could result in you breaking the glass. The door is complete and it looks like it fits on a cabinet as well. So now I have to join it to the cabinet um, using um, hinges and um, it looks perfect. So just putting a bit of a nice finish into it, nothing major, you don't have to, but you can if you want to. Next thing is apply some adhesive and line your cabinet, every part of the inside of your cabinet. And it is very important that you insulate your cabinet. Now you don't have to use an alu foil, but you have to use something that you think can insulate very well and keep your heat and humidity inside. So now I decided where to place the bulbs and these are going to form the source of heat. And um, what I am doing here is putting two holes in a cabinet, one in the top right of the cabinet and one at the bottom left of the cabinet. This is where I will be placing the, um, the fans. So they will be on the outside of the incubator attached to the cabinet and will be blowing air into the incubator. I have to be careful with this. In some cases, it's best if you place everything within the incubator without drilling a hole outside. If you are in the areas where humidity is really, really high, um, make sure that the box has no um, holes around it. If you are in an area where humidity is low, you can drill the hole around it. So what I did here was uh, put 
the fans into a frame um, so that I can attach it to the cabinet. But as I was saying with humidity, you have to know what type of weather conditions, what, what kind of humidity you have in your area and then you decide whether you want to put more holes or less holes on your cabinet. Um, later on in the construction, I put some more holes onto my cabinet because there was too much heat um, in the cabinet. So it was a, uh, it was a, a game of balancing act and um, in the end I got it right, but it was a lot of work. So um, what I'm doing now is um, building the rails for the shelves um, and the trays to, um, to come in. And um, I didn't really go into this um, part of the video, but you can watch my other videos. I'll leave the link um, somewhere um, in the video. You, you can watch it and see how I built the, the railings and the shelves for the incubator. Uh, it's quite simple and straightforward, and I suggest you be creative with it. But if you don't want to be creative, just go on to my other videos. This is uh, when I was building the shelves for the egg incubator using a cotton box and um, you can watch that video and see how I did this one. I think it was a really good construction so you can watch that video and learn how to do it. In addition you can also watch the same video and um, learn how I built um, the egg trays because I didn't really go into details much with the egg trays in this video as well. You are more than welcome to watch the other videos or you be creative with the way you want to do this. It's all up to you. So yes, um, as you can see, I built it for this cabinet and it fits well. And now you can um, watch the video again in a, the previous video and see how to build egg trays. As you can see, it fits well. Now we move on to the wiring. We decided where to put the bulb holders and this is where the bottom um, bulb holder which was going to be close to the fan at the bottom left of the cabinet. So we measured where that bulb is going to be. This is where the wires are going to go through into the bulb holder and we did the same at the top um, right. So now the wiring, um, I'm not good with wiring, it's not my area of expertise. So I got a friend of mine who is an electrician, I got him on board and I would advise you to get an electrician if you don't know how to wire stuff. And um, this is the diagram, a very simple diagram of what we did in terms of wiring. So what we did here with the wiring was um, that we joined all the live wires, one from each of the fans and then one from each of the bulbs and we joined them together at one point and then we connected it to the live wire of the switch and then we then looped it back to the plug and then we did the same um, connected all three neutral wires from the bulb and the fan and then we connected that directly to the plug so this is how simple this construction is but seek the advice of a professional um, electrician and um, this is the actual um, demonstration on how we wire the whole thing. You can see where the fans are attached and the same applied. This is like the bottom left of the cabinet and we are currently working on the bulb holder on the bottom left where the fan will be directly blowing on the bulb to distribute the heat. And we did the same at the top for the fan and the bulb which is on the top right of the cabinet. Again, seek professional advice if you are not um, well versed in wiring and electricity related um, works. I would strongly advise you to seek a professional advice like I did and there's nothing wrong with that. Make sure to insulate any open wires as well. And now we are fitting the um, heat bulbs that I have to say these are 100 watts each so they are crazy um, hot and at some point during our operations hatching we had to switch between bulbs to get the right size I'm sorry to get the right type of um, heat um, you can see these are on and the fans are blowing 
so we closed it briefly and when we opened it it was hot like the dickens so um we had to play around and that this is something that happened during one of our incubation period we realized that the incubator could get overly hot and then we had to switch it off from the wall which is the main power source so we decided to attach a switch to it i think some days into putting the eggs into the incubator right from the beginning i would definitely advise you to add a switch to your incubator so that you don't have the issue of having to interrupt your incubation to put a switch onto your incubator so this was um, four days before we actually fit the switch i was um, taking the uh, incubator for its first spin for chicken eggs the temperature should be 37.5 plus minus 0.5 degrees from start to finish um, your humidity should be less than 50 percent for the first 18 days of your incubation if your incubator is manual like mine or you are thinking of building my model um, you would need to manually rotate your eggs um, we rotated our eggs on an hourly basis by rubbing our hands over the eggs to achieve a 360 degrees rotation when we went to sleep at night, um, we didn't rotate the eggs. So this is um, one of the issues with manual incubation and that could also reduce your um, hatch rate drastically. On day 18, the temperature remains 37.5 plus minus 0.5 degrees, but you raise your humidity from 50 to 60 or 65 percent. Um, I recommend 65 percent and above by placing a bowl of water into your incubator. We locked the incubator on day 18 and waited for the chick to hatch three days later. In our case, the chick started hatching on day 20, which is also normal, can happen. And um, here are the results of the incubator. Um, uh, it was quite exciting to see because um, the first incubator I built was a cotton box and we didn't have the, um, the glass door so we couldn't see what was happening. But this time I had the glass door fitted and so we didn't have to open it constantly and um, you could actually um, sit in front of the incubator and watch um, you know nature um, display some wonders um, and it's just amazing if you have the opportunity to build this just sit there and see how nature really works it's 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 fantastic and it's so rewarding to see um, you know life come out of um, egg and um, yes um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit, I'm being a bit romantic right now. So yeah, this is the results of um, what we did, and it was completely amazing. Um, I'm very pleased with the results, and I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please go on to subscribe. I recommend my channel to other people to subscribe as well. Don't forget to share, um, like, and also comment and I will see you in the next construction. I also like to remind you that I'm currently working really, really hard on editing the, um, the video for the 5,000 capacity egg incubator. So forgive me when I'm not being um, quick with my videos, but that's because I still have to pay uh, my rent. And that means I have to go and get an actual job that pays me. So if you want to see more of my video, and prevent um, a long delay or a long wait before you see any of my video. Continue to subscribe, continue to like, continue to share, continue to comment. You know, um, just be active with my channel. Recommend it to your friends and family and anyone you don't know or know. And uh, the more the channel grows, the more dedicated um, I can be because um, I know how special and important you are um, to this channel. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, I am Will and I am out.